All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Azuzin session. How about that? Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Right, so we are live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch.television? Today we are trying to port the game, the breakout game that implemented the Zig in Jai. Uh, I don't really know why, but uh, I just decided to to port it to Jai and continue developing Jai. I don't know. Uh, so I personally don't really want to continue developing in, uh, this thing in Zig uh, because I feel like it's not my language. That's what I feel like. The, the language itself is fine, right? So the language is, itself is fine. I just feel like I'm not the target audience of that language. So um, I developed in it because my audience asked me very, very nicely to try this language out. I tried it out. It's a good language. It's really promising, uh, but it's not my language for sure. It is definitely not my language. So uh, hello, hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm going to keep this source code as it is, and I'm going to try to port it to Jai and see how easy it is to port to Jai. So if I take a look at the like the structure of the source code, there is nothing particularly you know special about this structure. I think I can easily translate that just to Jai and uh, continue developing Agile. So I, I think I'm gonna try an approach where I would like literally copy paste the piece of code into a GI program and will modify that piece of code until it compiles. And that way I will translate the entire program into Jai and hopefully it will work as similarly how it works in Zig. So there's only like 200 lines of code, so it shouldn't be very long. Um, so, and after I'm done, I'm gonna just like add more features to this game, right? So, yeah. What do you think? Is that a good plan for today's stream? Right. So, and also it, give me, it will give me an opportunity to program more in J, right? So, um, thank you so much, uh, good Duke, for, for the sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you for like, 34 months tier two. Thank you, thank you, really appreciate that. And LucasSig11, uh, thank you for five months of Twitch Prime. Uh, alrighty, 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 righty, righty. Okay, so I think I did a little bit of a cleanup uh, off screen. Uh, yeah, I think I did a little bit of cleanup, so I think I need to fetch uh, this entire thing. Origin. So, element 0216, thank you so much for four months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Merge Origin a Master. Okay, so we can take a look at how it looks like right now, right? So, was it? I think it was somewhere in third party. Uh huh. I can't see right in this mist, so I have to do build uh -huh, and run. There we go. So it will take some time, uh, and then uh, we'll be able to play this game. So we'll take a look at how it looks like right now. So it has the. Uh, so it's analyzing semantics or something, a little bit, okay, uh, cool. And now we have the game. So this is how it looks like, uh, right? And yeah, so I think I, I also want to uh, link this stream where we were developing all of that. So I think it's kind of important. Uh, so let me also open the description. Um, yeah, there we go. So the source code uh, zig out for zig out is available in here, so you can find it in here. And um, zig out um, development development stream should be available somewhere here. So we'll have to find uh, sodium. Uh, let's find sodium daily. Uh, here it is. So it's it's called Paid Zig Stream. If you didn't watch it, I really recommend to check it out because this is where we developed this entire thing, right? So let's actually call it uh, Paid Zig Stream. Right. There we go. And let me go somewhere, right? So I probably want to go into Zig Zig out. And I'm going to open the source code, right? So this is one thing. And I'm going to create another folder, right? So we need to come up with the name for the Jai version, right? So let's call it Jai Break, right? <laughs> let's call it Jai Break. 
and let's create the main.jy file. Uh, right, so we'll first have to import the basics, right? So this is sort of like a standard library. And uh, let's create an entry point. Right? So this is the entry point, and then here we'll say, hello, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sailor, right? So it's supposed to say sailor. Uh, no. All right, and let's try to build this entire thing. So, Jai, and there we go. Uh huh. Hopefully, it will build successfully, right? It seems to be building, which is nice. Um, leap fake root. It's a very interesting library. Never heard about this before. It probably creates a fake root for you, something like ch root, uh, but fake root. There we go. So we have hello, sailor. Um, okay. So, I suppose the first thing we want to do, we want to start copy pasting the code, right? So here we have a section for the constants, right? For different kind of constants. And uh, I'm gonna just uh, right away, copy paste this section and try to compile it and see how the Jai compiler will uh, complain about this thing. So as you can see, we don't have a const. So this is probably the first thing that we probably wanna remove, right? So no const, please. Thank you very much. So unable to parse expression. Okay, so there is no such thing in here. So we're supposed to do something like this, right? I presume. Uh, I don't remember. Does Jai coerce integers to floats automatically? I think it does. It's pretty strict on different number types, but I think it can quite easily take an integer and convert it to float because it kind of makes sense to do that. Well, maybe, not, maybe not. I don't know. So, uh, okay, loose data assignment. Uh, this is because this is not a declaration of a variable. This is assignment of a variable. To declare a variable and assign it, we have to do that. But this is in specifically variable. Uh, what we have in here is, in fact, um, a constant. So we have to initialize it like this, right? This is how you initialize the constant, right? So the syntax for variable assignment is actually pretty cool. So you have a name then always colon, right? You always have a colon uh, after the name of declared variable. Then you have a type, which is optional. You may actually not provide the type, but you, you, then you have a type. And then uh, you have either equals or another colon, right? So if you have equals, you are defining a mutable variable. If you have a colon, you defining constant, right? So this is a variable and this is a const, right? So basically the difference between variable and constant is this uh, small token. And since the type is optional, you can actually declare them like this. So this is a very clever syntactical pun. This is like a really clever syntactical pun because uh, you may think that this is a single token in this language. No, in fact, it's two tokens. This is genius, holy shit. <laughs> it's just like a, it's, it's, like, it's like a joke. It's a comedy joke uh, making fun of all these languages. Like, so this one makes fun of like Go and this one of Haskell and it combines them all, all together into coherent sort of syntactical logic, if you, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's so clever, like I don't know. Uh, I feel bad for talking about the syntax but at the same time, it's so fucking genius. It's it, it's it's like a pun. You see what I mean? It's it's, it's a funny pun. Um, I really like that. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I'm like I focus on this kind of stuff. They don't really matter. But anyway, uh, so let me now do another thing. Um, yeah. So let's try to recompile this into a thing. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So here, let me, let me see. So this one is supposed to be just something like this. Um, for F32, I think I want to query replace F32 um, equal, right? I want to replace it with just float 32 and just do something like this, right? So after that, I'm going to query replace just equals with just that. And I think that will work. Uh, unless for the first one, right? Because here we'll have to have like a single thing in here. All right. So what else do we have in here? F32, it's a float 32 because I didn't replace it. 
Uh, okay, so it compiled, right? So we ported a section with the constants, right? So these are the constants that um, control different aspects of the game. Uh, Ford, hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for 14 months of um, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you like the color of the bike shed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is literally... <laughs> Well, sometimes it's just you just have to acknowledge like a very good choice for the color of the bike shed. So uh, anyway, so let's define um, the target structure, right? So target is uh, a structure, right? Uh, what's interesting is that if I try to do something like this, it will compile. So it's kind of similar to how Zig does it, or maybe Zig is kind of similar to how Jai does it. So here you will see that we're declaring actually mutable variable, right? And what's the type of this variable? So we specifically omitted the type. And I suppose the type of this variable is the type, because structure itself is the type, right? So if I try to, yeah, it, it is true, right? <laughs> It's kind of interesting, but since like it's inferred, you don't really have to do that. It's kind of similar how Zig does that, so it's not like a novel idea, but it sort of like fits into into the whole syntax in some sense. Um, all right, because if you take a look at Zig, right, so it's also you just define a constant and just assign the structure, right? Uh, what do we need to have here is float 32 and uh, y and we also need to, uh, to have an indication that the target is dead. Uh, by target we mean the, uh, you know, the bar that you're hitting, right? So th this is the target, the green one, uh, right? So that's what we have in here. So this is the target. So, and the dead indicates that like it's not available anymore, it's not going to be rendered if it's dead. Uh, right, and it's not uh, gonna be checked for collisions if it's dead, right? So it does not exist. So in all of the loops, we just like, you know, ignore it. So that boolean, there we go. So I suppose you have to put some equals in here. Right? Uh, what's up, Feng Chi? Hello, hello, Manasoyme. Hello, hello, welcome. Okay, so let me see. We have a function that initializes all of the target, basically the target grid, right? So what it does, it just returns the array of targets of a particular size, right? And then we just assign it to the targets pool, uh, nothing particularly special. So I'm just going uh, to copy paste this code and see if I can port it to Jai. So how difficult would it be to port that thing to Jai? Okay, so we don't have a fan, so then we have to do that, and then the return type is indicated with an arrow. And I think the arrays have the same structure, right? So they, they, they look the same, pretty much. Okay, so we have an internal variable into which we collect in everything. So I'm gonna assign, like, I'm gonna define it as the array of that type. And as far as I know, undefined is just like triple dash. Uh, right. Okay, so here we have like a four loops. I still don't quite understand how loops work in Zeek, so I just picked whatever was the closest to what I wanted to do. Uh, so maybe there was a better way to do that, but it is what it is. So uh, I would rather do something like this for row, target rows, minus one, and there you go. So I don't need to have that stuff anymore. Right. So then uh, I have to do a similar thing for column, uh, target calls, right, target calls, and I don't need that stuff. So what do we have in here? So here I just have to initialize X and Y uh, of the specific target, right? So that's what I have to do. X and Y, and so here we're gonna have Y, and then I'm gonna just put this thing in here, and I'm going to try to compile that. Okay, so I think that is basically it. Do we need to have anything else? I don't think so. All right. So, unable to parse, what is it? Ah, okay. So I can probably do something like this now. Uh -huh. Okay. So, mismatch type. Uh, wanted float 32, but got S64. Okay, so the type of this thing... Oh, okay, I see. So all of these things are... Uh-huh. They are S64, they're integers. Okay, maybe for now I'm just gonna kiss them. Right. 
So because it's gonna be the easiest thing to do right now, I right, basically just like you know convert it to that specific type, and there we go. Okay, so we ported that specific uh, that specific thing. So the next thing would be to define a target pool, right? So let's actually try to define the target pool, and I think it will not work like that because uh, I'll, I'm trying to run it in compile time context. Okay, attempt to perform a procedure call outside the body of another procedure. Uh, calls uh, can may occur. Ah, okay, that's very interesting. So can I just do something like run? Just run this procedure. Oh, okay, I can do that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I just run this procedure at compile time and return it like to, to here. I think it's similar to Zeek, right? So whatever you put in here in Zeek will be also called at compile time rather than runtime. So it's, it's kind of similar in that sense. Uh, okay, so another thing I want you to do, I want you to just check how it looks like. All right, I want to print the targets, right? Uh, for uh, target pool, targets pool, I'm going to just print uh, it. Right, maybe I can even do it like that. Uh, just print it. Just print it. Just print it. Just print it. Okay, so with almost exactly what I wanted, I just forgot to put uh, a new line in here. Right, so if I put it like that, and then I just run it, there we go. So here are all of the targets initialized at compile time. Right. Um... <clears throat> Mm -mm, how are you guys doing? Mm. So, all right. Let's continue, I suppose. Right, so we initialized all the targets, and these are the coordinates of, uh, you know, this green... Uh, rectangles that we have in here, right? So these are just the coordinates and we ported the calculation of them to a different language. So that's what we did. Uh, so I'm just commenting everything I did so people can follow. Uh, also, maybe I'm gonna uh, copy paste to do's as well because maybe I'm gonna uh, actually resolve those to do's in Jai because why not? So war, let's remove the war. Uh, var. I think it's called var. Mm, so, uh, float 32. So that's what we got. Uh, and in here, since these are variables, we're gonna put it like that. So it's quite important to use equals in here because they are, they must be mutable. This is the state of the game. Right. So this is the config of the game, right? So let's put it like this. Configuration, right? This is a configuration and this is the state. That's why uh, all of these things are mutable and all of these things are immutable. It's just like, you know, configuration. Um, okay, so let me try to compile this thing and see how it compiles. It compiles. All right, so the next thing, we are constructing the SDL rectangle. What's interesting is that we are not going to be using SDL, right? So I think I'm going to be using simp instead. And simp, right, is sort of like a SDL-like library that is part of the standard library of Jai. Although, as far as I know, John doesn't like the, the word standard library, so it's just basically the library that comes with the distribution of Jai. Right, so it's a um, library that comes with J, uh, with the language, um, that fills the same niche as SDL. It has a different API, but it fills the same niche, right? It basically allows you to open a window and put some simple primitives in it, and that interface is implemented on all of the supported operating system, right? So if you wrote a program uh, for specifically that, this program will work on all of the platforms the language can work, right? <coughs> Uh, so, mm. but you can manipulate AST in J. Have you tried that? No, I haven't tried that because I didn't really need it yet. Uh, so I'll learn features as I need them. Mm. Though there is a lot of tutorials uh, in the language, right? Mm, so how to, 
right so basic meta programming so basic meta program so there is explanation how to use all of that uh, with a lot of comments and examples and stuff like that so yeah. but i'll get to that when i actually need this kind of stuff right so for now i'm just like getting comfortable with the the basic features of the language right um okay so there we go. I wanted to use simp, and as far as I know, simp doesn't really have the notion of rectangles, right? So I'll probably have to define my own rectangle structure. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. So this is going to be um, struct, and this is AABB, uh, and this is simply like x float32, uh, then y, w, and h. And I keep forgetting that I have to use the semicolons in here. This is not what I wanted. I just wanted to replace this thing with semicolons. Okay. So, and because of that, I didn't think I need this construction anymore. Right. So the only reason I needed this construction is because I wanted like a easy conversion between like floats and integers. Um, I didn't think I need it. Right. So I didn't think I needed it. So what do we have here? Here we set the color for SDL renderer. So the only purpose of this function is to unpack the color. So I store the color as 32-bit integer, right? You can see it in here. And I just have a special function that uh, parses that integer into like a sequence of colors. And I think we'll need to have something similar for simp because simp actually uses arrays as the colors, right? So for, for simp, it's something like four, um, I think it's float 32, right? So basically four floats is the, uh, is the color for this thing. Uh, so maybe we're gonna first implement a function, something like unpack, uh, color, right? So here we're gonna accept the color, which is U32. And by the way, since I know that the color is U32, maybe for all of the colors, I'm gonna specifically say, say that they are 32. So this is another color, uh, this is another color, uh, this is another color, right? So these are the colors, U32. Right, and in here, in here, when I ac accept the color, I will just return something like four, uh, float 32, right? So this is the actual color that I want to have in here. Uh, so what we want to do, I'm going to just copy paste this thing and we're going to define four variables, right? Uh, those variables are going to have type of float, I presume. So the only thing we need to do is just extract the components, right? So here are the components. And after that, I think we need to divide this stuff uh, by 255. Oh, it didn't work because Emacs is kind of a poo poo. 255 like this, right? So that's what we want. And that will give us the, um, the colors normalized, uh, which we then can quite easily return uh, like so, RGBA. There we go. Something like this. Though, interestingly enough, so as far as I know, in the language I can return several values. This is not tuples, but it's actually you're returning several values. Right. So maybe this is something that I can then later use. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's actually super easy to change later. Right, so here... Um, I got to put something like this. So the idea here is essentially I can do unpack color and I can provide color uh, a a b b c c d d right and then say uh, r g b a like so and then I can just print those values right r g b a a so something like this right. I think, I think that's how it works. But at the same time, this is not, uh, this is not tuples, right? So, um, this is not tuples, RGBA, yeah. I think it's not gonna compile. I think uh, the language does not support Unicode and it actually explicitly says so. Say so. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Expected an expression after, and this is not an expression. Okay, sure. Uh, mm, I just use compose key to uh, create these kind of things, right? So I just hold compose key and I press A and colon, uh, A and colon, or maybe colon A. But it doesn't work anymore. So it, it, it broke, it's broken. <laughs> but that's how I did. Um, so, all right. Uh, what's going to be the next thing that I want to port? Uh, target rectangle. I see. So, essentially, this function, given a target, constructs the hitbox of the target. Right. So, it constructs the hitbox of the target. Maybe I should have called it hitbox, but I mean, it is what it is. So, here we accept the value of the target and we get a rectangle. Right. So, this is a rect. And what we have to return in here is essentially x, y, target width, target height, and I think that is it. And I know that there is a way like to say inline. I'll oh, actually highlight it like this. Interesting. But I don't really know how it is used in value directive in procedures. So I probably have to learn. Uh, all values provided in struct literal must be constant, but our one argument is not. Oh. You cannot do it like that. Okay, so we can do something like, mm, I don't know, result, right? So we have a result and it has a type target, uh, actually rect, and this is something like this, right? And then you can do result x, target x, y, y, w, target width, target width, and h target height and then we can return that thing quite easily cool so that's very cool we can even test that so for each target uh, target spool right so this is a target spool uh, i can print the target itself right so i can print the target itself uh -huh. so this is the target cool but then if I transform that target into its uh, hitbox, into its rectangle, uh, is it going to work? Yeah, it, it works. So as you can see these are the boundary box of these, uh, of those things, right? So this is how we slowly, step by step, uh, migrating that code to Jai. And at some point, hopefully it will just work, right? Because it compiles. And as you know, if it compiles, it works. Okay, so the next thing is projectile, right? So we need to port projectile. So it should be kind of similar. Mm, so let me copy paste this thing in here. So it has to be X. And um, so this is going to be approach size, approach size, approach size. And then I just return the result of fan. Uh, like this, and then the result is basically this. There we go. Uh, graphics, yes. But the graphics right now are from Zeek, so this is not a program written in, in Jai, right? So it's written in Zeek, and I'm porting that to Jai. Right. So we're going to have a similar result, but in, in Jai. It's kind of interesting. There, there's no death mechanic, so if you hit the floor, it's, it's totally fine. No friction, yeah, literally no friction. Uh, the energy is completely preserved, right? So it's completely preserved. It's it's beautiful. Actually, it, why did it went that route? But okay, <laughs> some sort of a bug. Cool, that's pretty cool. So proj rectangle. I'm not gonna test that. I'm gonna just check if it compiles, and it does not compile because this is not F32. It's a float F32. School physics, yeah. Uh, bar rectangle, bar rectangle. And so, and as far as I know, bar rectangle doesn't really require any input parameters, right? So that means I can just do something like this. This is a bar rectangle, and this one is bar x, then I wanna copy paste this thing here. So it's a little bit easier for me to work with. Uh -huh. So 
This one is bar length. This one is bar thickness. Okay, is it gonna work? It worked. Okay, uh, update. Okay, this one is the most interesting one, right? So because it updates the state of the game given the delta time in seconds, right? And it's pretty, you know, complicated. It's not really that complicated, but uh, just a little bit of a logic in here. Uh, and we'll have to port it. So the main problem here is going to be that uh, has intersection, we're using function has intersection from the SDL, uh, but we don't have that in simp, I think. Maybe there is a function that checks the intersection of AABB somewhere in Jai, but I'm too lazy to search for it, so I, I will have to implement my own intersection. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna copy paste this huge function and I'm gonna see how much the compiler is going to complain about this function. How did you fix that issue with the ball getting stuck in platform? I explain that in a second part of the previous stream. Right, so check out this stream, right? So in fact, like yesterday, actually, not yesterday, but the last time I actually did two streams, right? So I did the Zeke stream where I then got tired at the end, but then later after I took a break, I did a, another small stream, right? I did another small stream where I actually fixed it and explain it how I fixed that. So there is like a second part. And then I concatenated two streams together into a single stream and I uploaded uh, that to YouTube, right? So the second part is there. Mm -mm. So probably maybe I need to put the timestamp to indicate where is the second part, but um, we'll see. Um, okay, so let me see. Of course, this is not like this. Uh, float 32, and there we go. So what do we have? Overlaps, right? So this is the function that we'll need to implement, overlaps. Uh, we're going to accept uh, rectangle A and the rectangle B, and this thing is supposed to return a boolean indicating whether this thing is implemented or not. Um, so can I assert this thing saying that it's not implemented or anything, but I might return false. Uh, so I'm going to implement it a little bit later. Um, also, here you don't need parentheses. Okay, so yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, it didn't complain about math clamp, surprisingly. Uh, didn't complain about that. So this one is or, right? So this is what we have. And interestingly, so here I didn't have to put not equals because this thing returns a boolean, so it's totally fine. I wonder if I can do stuff like this, right? So it's yeah, there we go. So it actually looks pretty cool. It actually looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I think it is. Mm -mm. Right, the next compilation error. Uh, pointer. Okay, so overlaps takes the rectangles by value, so we can actually remove this kind of stuff. Uh, the next one. Okay, for loops. So that means here I can do something like for target pool. Uh -huh, target pool. And if condition x is break, all right, if target is not dead. Interesting, I think I can update this thing to be something like if target uh, dead continue. Uh, continue. Right, I think I can do something like that. Yeah. Uh huh. And furthermore, yeah, instead of doing that, I can finally do something like this because I don't remember Zeke having this kind of operator. I think Jai must have something like that. Uh, and in here, I have something like that. Target so that equal true. So that's basically the loop that we have in here. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, so let's go uh, to the next compilation thingy. And here we don't have any of this stuff. Uh -huh. And here we have a dereference. I don't, I'm not sure if I care about this dereference. Uh, there we go. So everything worked out perfectly. Okay. Mm 
so why Chad is dead, by the way? Do you guys have any questions so far, maybe? Uh, does anyone uh, have any questions about what we're doing right now? Is everything clear what we're doing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm, but didn't Jay John said it's UTF-8? I don't really know what he said regarding UTF-8 and Unicode names and stuff like that. But How are you liking Jay so far? I think it's really promising. I think it is really promising. So, but target is not defined, is it, in the loop? Yeah, it is not defined. Uh, it's supposed to be it, but you don't have to worry about that because we're using statically typed compiled language, which means that the program is not going to run until I fix all of the errors. So that means if I made any mistakes in here, it doesn't really matter because the program is not going to run anyway. It's not going to launch nukes or anything right so we're just like not gonna run until it fix it so that's the point of statically typed compiled languages you don't have to worry about the mistakes because the compiler will tell you them anyway and won't run the program until you fix them that's the beauty of the statically typed compiled languages can you use get rect module for the rectangles uh i guess i can but it's a uh, it's a uh, literally four conditions it's literally four conditions. Are we doing a left pad yet again? Chat, are you suggesting me to do a left pad again? What is wrong with you, chat? Uh, okay, so let me demonstrate you how you check the whether two rectangles overlap or not. So probably have to show that. It's actually very straightforward. I still don't understand that fully, but you can sort of like prove that this is the correct formula uh mathematically you can prove that so imagine that you have two rectangles right so this is the first rectangle this is the second rectangle so this is a and this is b and let's take a look at their sides right so let's say that the length of the left side of a is going to be l a uh right is going to be r a then the top right and the bottom right so, and correspondingly, we have LB, uh, R, excuse me, R, B, T, B, and B, B. Okay. So, let's take a look at four conditions when these two rectangles 100% don't uh, overlap. So, for instance, uh, if R, A, and L, B Right, so if RA is strictly less than LB, like it is right now, it doesn't matter where are the rest of the rectangles, it does not intersect. Like it just does not intersect. Like if this one single condition is true, there you go, you never intersect. So this is the first condition. So the second one, when they are 100% don't intersect, is when the, it's the other way around. If you swap these uh, rectangles, it's when R, RB is less than uh, L A, right. So these are two conditions horizontally de uh, determining where, when they are not going to overlap. So we have a similar situation uh, vertically, right? When B A, this this one, this B A is less than T B. That means it's hundred percent does not uh, overlap and correspondingly B B uh, less than T A. Four conditions. So. Basically, if you combine them with OR, all of the four with OR, you get a single condition that just checks that these two rectangles do not overlap. Right. So that single condition checks that these two rectangles do not overlap. How to check that they do overlap? Well, you just invert it. There you go. Do I need another framework to come up with that? I don't. So, <laughs> uh, oh my God, so I've got so many messages, uh, I can't keep, keep up with them. Uh, so, mm, mm, thanks, Todding, for making assembly my language number two. Which assembly? 
you, you do realize that assembly is not a language. Assembly is not a language. I'm literally tell you to, uh, I'm really sorry to tell you that it's a family of languages, right? So and depending on the CPU architecture and specific dialect, they could be actually dramatically different. So uh, it's like saying that my favorite language is Lisp, but Lisp is, is not a language. There is no such language as Lisp. It's a family of languages. There are things like Common Lisp, Scheme, Emacs Lisp. Uh, closure, but there is no such thing as this. It's a family of languages. Like, what exactly are you talking about? Which one? Uh, okay, I forgot this uh, wasn't a VOD. Ah, okay. <laughs> People just zoned out listening to me. Uh, all right. The chat has been revived. Are you using QWERTY layout? No, I'm using Yutsuken keyboard. Have you heard about Yutsuken keyboard? Uh, this one. This is the keyboard I use. This is how it's spelled, by the way, it's, and also pronounced. You can Google it up. Just type this into Google, and you will know what it is. It's it's actually very easy. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. With break, uh, with break, you establish cond x is false, so no need for it. Uh, the break you establish cond x is false, no it for it. I'm not sure what you mean, I'm sorry. Uh, what does this mean? So essentially, a equal b is the same as a equal a or b. So it's it's the same. It's it's similar to how uh, a plus b is the same as a equal a plus b. It's literally the same. Hopefully, I I I don't know if J has this operator yet because I haven't tried to compile this code. I just assume that it probably has this operator because the language is based on C C plus plus and C C plus plus does have this operator. So I'm making a lot of assumptions in here. It might be wrong. So maybe it doesn't exist there. So that means I will have to explicitly write it like that. But it's not that big of a deal. So... Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, left pad in 2022. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Time to install Box2D. <laughs> I hope it's Fasm and not stinking Asm. Yeah, Fasm is actually pretty cool. The, the cool thing about Fasm is that it's very small and self-hosted simultaneously. Fasm is self-hosted. It is written in itself. And it's like a full-featured featured x86-64 uh, assembly. Assembler. Uh, it's, it's freaking amazing. I really recommend it. And it's also cross-platform. Like, holy fucking shit. Can you imagine that? x86-64 assembler, self-hosted, written in itself, in assembly, x86-64 assembly, ported to DOS, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, like there's a lot, a lot of things. So what platforms do we support? Um, uh, maybe not FreeBSD, well, I mean, you can run it on FreeBSD via the Linux uh, emulation layer, but anyway, it supports DOS, Linux, uh, Win32. Maybe even Mac OS. Probably Mac OS. Not gonna lie. Okay, so it supports at least three operating systems. So you can find it in here. Right. Uh, so. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Regarding with the breath of Gofkin is so. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, does Russian Dwarak exist? I have no idea and I don't care. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. It works on DOS POG, yes. It was originally written for DOS when I think Windows was not a thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, free for what's up? Mm, self-hosted x86-64 yes it's amazing i really recommend this assembly 
Uh, alrighty. Okay. So let's try to compile this thing and see what it supports and what it doesn't. Okay, so I actually tried to compile, so we, yeah, uh, everything seems to be fine. Uh, okay, so here we have that, and here we have uh, that. So this is or. Uh, no music, I probably, I don't know, music is gone. I can refresh the pretzel rocks. Oh, okay, that is very cool. So yeah. No music, I'm sorry. Um, modern software development has happened, so that's why we can't have any music. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's continue. Maybe, uh, I can probably... Um, oh, maybe it got banned in Russia. You know what? It probably got banned in Russia. I'm pretty sure about that, because the, the Pretzel Rocks was spreading fake fakes about this special operation that's why it has to be banned so i'm pretty sure about that jesus christ anyway um so all of that censorship is actually like screwing up with the entire infrastructure of the internet like uh, at least within the russia so they're like they're trying to ban something and they break something um, at the same time beatbox All right, so let's continue. Okay. Uh, two, 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 two. So that is fine. Probably have to do that like so. Cat gem. Cat gem indeed. Mm hmm. It's actually night, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, so, sorry. Mm. So, enjoy the keyboard ASMR instead until I finish. Uh, now, uh -huh, we don't have to do that. What the fuck? Mm, porting code? No, removing parentheses. <laughs> Exactly. So clamp. For some reason, I want to use clamp from the standard library, though. Even though it's super easy to implement on your own, but I want to use it uh, from the standard library because this is something that has to be in the standard library all the time. That's like for sure. Uh, modules. There should be something like math. And let me try to grab without, like, with ignoring the casing. Uh, let's search for clamp. So we found some clamp shit. Cool. Uh huh, and for some reason it is, it accepts the point, huh? because it it modifies it. I see. Do we have just clamp? Uh, okay, so there is a clamp and basic, right? And let me try to find the clamp. Uh, here it is. It's part of the basic, right? Uh, cool. Let's wait. modify return is ooh Jai has contracts just like in C++ right it's kind of hmm. so what is a modify right so because this looks like a condition that has to be met right and this is something that has to be checked I really I'm really interested in this thing so what, what the hell is modify so there should be something in how to uh, on how to use this thing right modify and looks like uh-huh all right so there is a whole section dedicated to modify and modify the modify directive can be used to insert some code between the header and the body of a procedure or struct to change the value of the polymorph variables or to inject the polymorph for some combination of variables 
Okay, that's pretty cool. So you have a procedure and you inject in some code at compile time, uh, right, to check something. Or maybe to even modify, right? When you just call the proc, it will force S64 there. Um, as you can see, the modifier goes between the procedure and body. When the call proc, the usual poly polymorphism uh, mechanism happens and value of T is found. Then the body of the modifier is run. Uh, and there, the value is not constant, can be changed to whatever you want here. We always set it to X64, then return true, indicate that we accept the polym polymorph. So these things are called polymorphs or something. It's really fucking interesting. I really like that. Uh, and then you can like check that A and B are the same type. Otherwise, if they're not the same type, it's not going to work or something like that. Or if, oh, okay. It's a very interesting mechanism. I'm not sure how I personally will use it, but yeah, it makes sense. And it definitely makes sense for clamp, right? Because it probably doesn't make any sense if it's not a scalar, right? So yeah, I really like that. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's like templates, but simple, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I can probably just use clamp, right? So, and that should just work. Uh, let me try to recompile this entire thing. Okay, so to, uh, so it has to be it dead. Uh huh, that makes sense. So it dead, and this one has to be it dead. Another, uh, you're telling me that it is not dead. I can assign to a large value iterator or perhaps you want it by a pointer this is what i was talking about this is what i was talking about when i uh you know used uh zig right so let me show you so this was one of my problems right so if i don't do that right if i don't do that and i try to compile this entire thing um it tells me that attempt to dereference non pointer type, and that's it. It doesn't even try to understand what I'm trying to do. Uh, but by the way, no, 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 it's it's not something like this, right? Um, right. It doesn't even suggest you, right? So it says that okay, cannot assign to const, right? And it doesn't really say anything else, right? So it just it states okay, this is const. I cannot assign to const. Right, it could have guessed that I'm trying to like um, iterate over like references, right? And because of that, I need to put uh, a star in here, right? It's actually very easy to guess, but it didn't do that. Jai did that. Jai freaking did that. And because of that, I respect Jai, right? So as you can see, the compiler teaches you how to use it, right? The compiler teaches you. Mm, it's like playing the game, right? It's like playing the game. Imagine th that if to play the game you had to learn, like, read like a huge manual. It was a thing in eighties and nineties, by the way, right? So because people didn't know how to make games, right? So and how to make tutorials. So usually they would ship like a huge manual with the game. You're supposed to read that manual first, right, and then play the game. So and then later people realize that um, you know it's not really reflects well on sales right so if the game just teaches you how to play it like in a hidden way people like such game more uh interestingly if, like the game development industry is sort of like forced to do that because there's like a huge competition and if you don't make a good experience you're just out of the competition in the language development industry we don't have such competition at all in reality I think in a language industry, in language creation industry, there is literally no competition. I think there is no competition, right? Because as soon as you sort of vendor locked um, a certain company to use a certain language, other languages just can't compete with you, right? So can you compete with COBOL? So COBOL can be as shitty as it wants. Right, it could be like a completely shady language, but since so many companies are vendor locked on that language, it doesn't fucking matter. There is no competition in language space. Like it just doesn't fucking matter. Uh, and I wonder if that's like intrinsic to programming languages, right? 
Can you establish like a similar competition as in game development? Probably not, because games and languages are kind of like fundamentally different. Probably, it's kind of an interesting thought. Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> maybe there is a little bit of a competition in new emerging languages, right? That didn't have an opportunity to, to vendor lock at like a user base. Uh, but apart from that. Right. Is there a competition between COBOL and Java? Probably not. So there is a competition between companies. Maybe, maybe there is a competition between companies that use those languages, but between the languages themselves. Not really. Mm. Actual human languages don't have competition either. It's like actually a good point. There's a lot of interesting parallels between uh, programming languages and um, natural languages. Uh, so, and the more popular programming becomes, the more those parallels become obvious. So there is um, sort of like three main uh, purposes of the natural language. The first purpose is to transmit the information. Uh, at least like Encyclopedia uh, Britannica sort of like... Um, defines three goals for the language. Let's actually Google that. Uh, purpose of language. Uh, so to facilitate communication, yeah, yeah, Britannica. I remember reading about that in Britannica. So specifically this paragraph is actually very interesting. So it like denotes three purposes. In most accounts, the primary purpose of language is to facilitate communication in the sense of transmission of information from one person to another. However, social logistics and uh, sociolinguistic and psycholinguistic studies have drawn attention to a range of other functions for languages. Among these is the use of language to express a national or local identity, uh, a common source of conflict in situation in multi-ethnicity around the world, such as Belgium, India, Quebec, and another conflict that is going on right now as well, also related to that. Also important uh, are the ludic, playful uh, function of language encountered in such phenomena as puns, riddles, crosswords, puzzles, and range of functions seen in imaginative or symbolic context, such as poetry, drama, and religious expression. So this is actually very important. So three purposes of the language. Transmitting information, um, group identity, right? And um, recreational, right? So some sort of like entertainment or whatnot. And what's interesting is that right now, as the programming become more and more popular, you can see all of the three things in programming languages as well. Programming languages actually serve as a tool to transmit information from a human to a computer to explain computer what needs to be done and also to transmit information between humans, right? to uh, transmit information about what the computer should do to another human, right? So we explain to other human being what computer should do through the programming language as well. So uh, group identity, I can, sh I can show you only one language and you can clearly see what I mean, right? This is a really good example of using programming language as a group identity. So, and the more this industry sort of grows, the more we're starting to talk about how nice the community of the language is. So it's almost like every time a new language uh, appears, the creators of this language, they making a focus on, look how big and nice of a community we have. So the focus in, is on the identity, right? So we can clearly see the language is being used as the group identity. So, and the third one, Right, ludic, playful, or some sort of entertainment, or some sort of like recreational. This is something that I personally do. I'm using languages in a ludic, playful way. And they also even show puns. They also show puns. And my favorite pun that I've ever done in my entire life using programming language can be found in my gist. Um, so, and that pun is essentially the most uh, memory safe buffer overflow in Rust. So essentially, this is completely safe uh, Rust, but at the same time, <laughs> it behaves as a program with buffer overflow. It's a 
completely safe Rust, but it behaves as a program with buffer overflow. So this is an example of a ludic usage of a programming language. This is something that I personally like to do. So this is what I call recreation programming. And you can clearly see that all of the three uh, purposes of the language uh, explained in Britannica, they actually feed programming languages as well. Transmitting information, uh, group identity, and the ludic entertainment recreational stuff. So, yeah. And I'm going to give the link to this thing in the description as well. Right. So if anyone is interested. Because I personally, I'm super proud of this pun. I'm actually super proud of this pun, right? It's absolutely safe Rust, but at the same time, it's a program that behaves like a program with buffer overflow. It's just so so beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, so, <laughs> most memory safe buffer overflow. <laughs> okay, uh, code golfing is one of the one of such things as well. So, and there is a lot of aspects to ludic. Uh, I hope I pronounced this word correctly. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. I think there is a lot of aspects to ludic programming or recreation programming, right? You can do a lot of different things. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Good programming prank. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Uh, so what were we talking about? Yeah, I guess. All right, so let's continue. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And by the way, again, speaking of syntactic and programming puns, right? I think the stuff with double colon and colon equal, right? Them not being like a single token, but being actually two to tokens smashed together, it's, it's also a pretty good pun. But it's more of a syntactic, a syntactical pun, but still. So I still, still like it. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, so the, the language competition, that's what we're talking about. The competition actually exists by the hand of the implementers as occurs with C++, but it's not happening in that many languages, right? So the competition between the, imp you know, vendors of the standard. Eh, but it has nothing to do with the language itself, right? So maybe the vendors of the C++ standard uh, implementations, they compete with each other, but the C++ as a language does not really compete with other languages that much. Or at least the competition is not that strong to actually improve the quality of the languages it's competing with, right? So, I mean, if C++ competed with somebody as a language, not as implementation, but as a language, it would improve over time. Does it improve over time? Well, some people may say yes, but I strongly disagree with them. Um, so, <laughs> the type of thing. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, okay. What do we have? Uh, oh yeah. So yeah, the language actually teaches you how to use it. So we have to put like a this in here, all right? And it will iterate by a pointer um, and declare it. So it has to be it. Uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, target rect. So this one is also it. Mm -hmm. uh, it. And this one also has to do something like this. Hmm. Interesting. So we'll have to do reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the time has... Well, it, it kind of worked. Didn't it? I'm surprised. How did it... How did it work? Because this thing is a pointer, but at the same time, I didn't have to dereference it to pass it there. There's something really southern here, but um, I'm gonna leave it at this one now. Mm -mm. I think I wanna make a small break to refill my water. But yeah, uh, let's continue removing parentheses. So we don't need any parentheses in here. So I think we ported the update function. So update function seems to be working fine. Um, okay. So let's continue. Uh, we need to do the render. So and the render is rather interesting, right? The render is rather interesting. 
uh, oh, by the way, I remember the simp actually accepts the um, the chorus as vector four, right? It accepts the chorus as the vector four. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Somebody in the chat is hurt by the color of my bike shed. I'm really apologizing for that. Uh, so, do we need to have a render in here? So I think we're not gonna have a render in here. Okay, so let me, let me see. Uh, project Tango. <clears throat> so if I take a look at the simp itself, uh, we're gonna change the color of the bike shed a little bit later as uh, once I'm done with, you know, w with moving the bike shed to a different place. Um, so let me see. So it's supposed to be simp, and I think there was a module immediate, right? So immediate quad, right? So we have immediate quad, and in here we have basically x and y, x and y, and as you can see here, color is vector four, right? So that's what we need to call in here. Uh, that's what we need to call in here. But the coordinate system. So here's the problem in SDL core. Uh, the coordinate system um, has y going down. But sim has simp has the y going up, right? And that creates uh, some problems. So maybe I'm going to create my own function called fill rect, which accepts the rectangle that you want to render. So this is going to be rect, and also the color that you want to render. It's a vector four, right? So in here we're just going to call this thing. Uh, so fill rect. I'm going to take the approach rect. And the proch color, right? I'm gonna remove this entire thing. Nico Red Edge, thank you so much for eight months of Twitch Prime. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Chat, do you feel wrecked? Oh, oh. So can I? How can I indicate that something is not implemented? Can I say false uh, to do not implemented? Because I remember there was some sort of assert, and this is another thing that I would like to have in here. Uh, 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 okay, what else do we have in here? So this one has to be like this. Uh huh. So this is bar. And here we're gonna fill rect, bar rect, and bar color. There we go. And that. And in here, we have to iterate through all the targets and render them as well, right? So it's going to be four targets pool um, if if it not that uh, just hmm, oh, can I do something with fill rect uh, target target rect it look how concise this language is. Look how concise it is. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's freaking beautiful. Right, so you're rendering the uh, projectile, you're rendering the bar, and you're rendering all of the targets if they're not dead. Right, so you can put everything in a single line. So you can write a lot of one-liners in this language. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I truly like it, truly like it. Okay, so vector four, and does it, ha does it mean that I have to import the math? I think that's what I have to do, I have to import the math. And the proch color, oh yeah, this one is interesting. So proch color um, has to be, I can probably unpack the color, right? So I can do unpack the color, uh, right? So, and this is unpack the color. So that's cool. And unpack the color right now returns these four floats. So it should return vector four, right? So let's quickly do that. Vector four, and we're gonna just put it in here. Cool, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? Although it's probably the struct literal must be constant there, not freaking constant, okay. So that's kind of sad, not gonna lie. So I think I can do, a make vector for. I think that's one of the things we want to do. Uh, beauty and conciseness, eh, it's not particularly finished yet, but I'm pretty sure 
syntactically it's gonna become even more beautiful when John actually focus on the syntax. Right now he doesn't really focus on the syntax that much, so that's why it's kind of yeah. all right. Uh, but once he starts focusing it, I think it may become even even cooler than that. So right now the the uh, syntax is not a priority. Mm -mm. Okay. I think I ported all of the necessary logic in here, right? So the only thing I need to do now is to organize the event loop, right? Open a window, um, you know, read the keyboard and stuff like that. So that's one of the things we'll have to do. So since I'm not using SDL, right, I'll have to write this part of the uh, game myself from scratch. Uh, okay, so let me go to, I already have like a Tetris, right? So maybe I'm gonna steal some code from Tetris. So Tetris giant. So what we'll need to do is to uh, create a window and also have a simp. So we'll need a window creation module, input module that handles the input, and also simp, which makes everything simple. I don't really know like why it is separate modules, but it is what it is. Um, Jaya Break is a great name. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Okay, so we need to create a window. Right, and this one is going to have J Break. And we have width and height. We already have window width and window height, so I have to put them here. Window width and window height. There we go. After that, so we already have shoot quid, so we're not gonna assign it anywhere. So we set the render target. So then we are organizing a while not quit, we keep doing other things, right? So we are computing the delta time, right? So this is a delta time related computation. Uh, then we update the window events, I suppose, right? So that's what we do. Uh, maybe it could could have been organized a little bit better, but it's fine. Then I'm iterating through all of the events that we have, right? I'm iterating through all of the events. And if I encounter quit, I'm actually setting quit to true, right? So that's the only thing I'm going to care about right now, right? And then here we're supposed to update the stuff. Uh, and I think the last thing we need to do, we need to swap the buffers. So let me see. So here we set the background, uh, but I'm gonna do that a little bit later. So for now, I just wanna organize the event loop, like a very simple event loop that does the things. Okay. Mm, so this is the delta time computation and this is fine. Okay. Uh, clear target. Mm -hmm. All right, so undeclared DT max, right? And DT max, what do we set the DT max? DT max is something like this. I can probably steal it as well. Uh -huh. Do we have anything else? Okay, so we've got a window, right? So we've got a window. It doesn't render anything because we didn't hook up the uh, logic updating and rendering into here, right? So this is something that we'll have to do as well. So when we render, actually we don't clear anything in the render, which is fine, I guess, but yeah. So let me get the code that cleans up the background. All right, so what we do in here is that we do it like this. Uh-huh. This one is interesting. So I have a background color and I just do the using for that background color and it sort of imports the values in here. I wonder if I can do something like background color, then I can unpack this entire stuff and use using on an expression. That is very interesting. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I wonder if it works. If it works, it will be actually very cool. I think it does work. Holy shit, you can actually do using on an expression. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, that's actually pretty cool. It's like you unpack, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Hmm. 
because this thing returns a structure and then it just imports the fields of that structure but you, you cannot refer, refer to the structure itself um just compiled fasm and fasm 0.1 second yeah it's amazing right so it's surprising how fast you can get software if you just remove all of the bullshit right i think like i, I strongly believe that in the forthcoming years the way we speed up software is going to be not by buying better hardware but by removing all of the crap that we put on software in the first place to make it slow and i think there will be actual business of stripping off uh, abstractions from the software to make it faster i think like people will actually make money from that so because for like many decades people were making money for uh from like piling abstractions on top of software because they needed to develop things quickly as soon as we get to the point where like we don't get a faster hardware and the hardware gets expensive right shortage of silicon and stuff like that we'll get to the point where the business that strips off all of that crap is going to actually grow and at that point people who know how to go deep into the abstractions and write the, uh, the code as simple as possible they're going to be the valuable programmers in the forthcoming years i'm pretty sure at least i have a feeling right so aphrodite muse aphrodite muse thank you so much for twitch prime thank you thank you thank you um all right but i don't know when it's gonna happen maybe like in in 10 years i think i have a feeling it's just like an unlevelled feeling <sighs> but when the, the day comes i'll be there okay hopefully i don't know who fucking knows uh, so what's gonna be the next thing um we have an event loop and in that event loop we check for the keyboard i wonder if there is any way to just check for the whether a specific key is pressed or not or do i really have to handle the key down and key up that's a good question fintech will always find a way to pile more bloat yeah probably uh always have a company that ships lightweight but still future complete product will destroy microsoft apple yeah yeah they will just just like that uh because users want fast responsive software they do want that they just can't say that um because they don't they cannot express right so uh they don't have enough like language or vocabulary to express what they want right so when they use software they just like does it feel nice if it feels nice they keep using it it doesn't feel nice it denotes you they don't use it they don't have time and they shouldn't have time to analyze why they don't like a specific software it's not their job it's the job of the developers right and if the developers are failing to realize what the user need well maybe they should be fired right so because like you're you don't you don't do your like job um i don't know mm -mm. it's just like it's 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 a borderline scam seriously right so the the users can't articulate what they want and the developers are taking advantage of that right so and on top of that the users don't have any choice right do you have any choice like if you're like a daily windows users user do you have a choice to just switch an operating system switch an operating system is a huge pain in, in the ass because you have to not only learn a completely new operating system but you also have to modify your entire workflow that you developed for years for that specific environment like you just can't do that it's too expensive right so and yeah because the users don't have a choice users can't articulate what exactly they want from the computers developers and by developers i mean the, the software development company like abuse that and it's, it is like it's it's fucking sad state of the of the industry um, and also a lot of the developers don't know how fast software can be yeah it's just like it's so fucking sad um Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all right. Yo. 
Hmm. I think I understand why it was tokenized differently. Remember how I complained about this thing being tokenized, like, and using this as a part of the word? I, I think I know why it was used as part of the word, because that enables this kind of highlighting. <laughs> Uh, mm, GC, OOP. GC and OOP are kind of like an orthogonal thing. Like they're not. Why did you smash them together? Uh, mm -mm. So, my favorite example is that the Game Boy Advance. A device with uh, 16 megahertz instantly boots. Why is it different on devices with 5 gigahertz CPU with multiple cores? Ask Microsoft developers. They're, they're masters of excuses. They can come up with like a huge PhD thesis of excuses. They can explain you why it is slow. Uh, they know all about it. Anyway, so uh, let's continue. Mm -hmm. mm, I need to so we need to do an update but most importantly we need to do uh, this thing mm, so update delta time uh, so current dt okay so we have a current dt then we clean the background i don't know why i did like that but that's fine because it's part of the rendering that's why yeah okay so we have sort of like these logical sections of um updating the input right so this is where we handle input then we update the state and this is where we render right and then i can say render that please and that should be fine and i guess that's it so now this thing should render something and it doesn't render because we have something that is not implemented yet okay so we need to fill the direct uh, right let's fill direct uh what i have to do maybe i have to do using mm -hmm. simp uh, immediate quad all right, immediate quad, and we have to provide x, y, and x, y. So this one's going to be x, y. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is going to be x plus w and y plus h. And then we're going to use the color. Right. But here is an interesting thing. As I already said, there is a problem of discrepancy between the coordinates. So I'll have to kind of invert the coordinates. All right. So, but the question is, how am I going to do that? Right. So, X is going to stay the same, but Y, Y has to be slightly different. So, I can probably, probably do y minus window height actually window height minus y right so something like this so that's going to be y uh, window height minus y so this is y so that means it's just sort of like reflects and now it's that uh but then i'll have to do the same thing right i will t have to take the same y but now subtract h i think this is how it's gonna work i think but it just like completely intuitively and it didn't work because why uh immediate flash try to uh, try to immediate flash when oh okay so we also have to set the shader for the color okay thank you so set shader for color i wonder if i can just do that once uh here because i'm never gonna just like use it for anything else Okay, it kind of worked, but not completely. Some of them are missing. And the question is, why the heck are they missing? I think I know why. 
because uh, when this entire thing is not initialized, it's probably filled with garbage from the stack. Uh, while porting uh, and or. Ah, okay. Thank you. Well, for condition in the body, and why? Uh, where did I do that? So, Zinga. Hmm, okay. I see, thank you. All right. So, speaking of the garbage, thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Right, so I wonder if I can say, okay, always initialize this thing with false. Is that something I can do? I can do that, but it didn't work. That is very cool. Okay, can I now say, well, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, can I say dead? Okay, apparently this didn't work. Or maybe I don't understand how this default value works. Right. Because I would expect that it would just like do that for me when I do that, but it didn't do that for me. So apparently I have to do that. So I'll have to like see what exactly that means. Uh, but run for that. So there you go. So this is how it looks like. And we can try to run it from Zik. Right. So this is, yeah, you can clearly see. So this is a Jaya version and this is a Zik version. Right. You can clearly see, so this is a J break, and this is a zig out break. I just like took the same code and ported it. So this one, it works, right? So you can play it, but you can't play this one yet because I didn't hook up. Um, didn't hook up the controls, right? So I didn't hook up the controls yet, but apart from that, it like it looks identical, right? So it's, it's the same code and it looks identical, which is pretty cool. So what we need to do, we need to hook up the controls. Uh, so let's quickly do that. Um, so if I go to Tetris, um, so I probably have to handle these things, right? So let's quickly do that. Uh, so let me put it this way. So keyboard, if pressed or if not pressed. Interestingly, interestingly, I think I want to have two variables in here, right? Something like left uh, and right, left and right. So and in here, we're going to do something like this. If key code, uh -huh. if key code case arrow left, we're going to take left and assign event key pressed. If right, we're going to do that thing with right. There we go. Right, so we have left and right. Uh, that way, it would be easier to port this code, right? That uh, resets the step timeout. Oh, this is this is a completely different code. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so it will be easy to port this code, right? Uh, where? We set the bar dx to zero. Then if left, we do that. Why well, not start it, of course? If right, why well, not start it? And that should be it, I think. So, but I'm not sure. I'm still not sure how to handle the a and d and stuff like that. So we'll have to. I will have to think about that. Uh, okay. So this does not compile. Uh, because it's equals anything else. Um, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. So we use it. Okay. So it's true when it's not equal to zero. Okay. You can probably also assign it like that. Uh, yep. Okay. And it crashed because I never implemented overlaps. Let's go ahead and implement it. Uh, so we already have everything that we need to implement in here, right? So. You know what I want? I want to have a function that accepts a rectangle and actually returns the sides. Uh, float, 
float, float, float. Uh, I think it has to be 32, right? 32. And here we're gonna simply return. Uh, so left is gonna be x, but right is gonna be x plus w, y, y plus w, plus h, and there we go. So that way I can say um, left a, right a, uh, maybe I'm going to actually do it like this, left A, right A, uh, top A, bottom A, uh -huh. sides A, right, and I can easily just port this condition, uh, so I'm going to just put it in here, there we go, uh -huh. R A less than L B or uh, R B less than L A or B A less than T B or B B less than T A. Right. And then we invert this entire thing and return. We could apply the Morgan law, but I just don't want to be a smart ass today, so I'm gonna just leave it, uh, leave it as this. Mm -mm. Lagataba. Start of the Lady Gaga song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very funny. So this is how we're gonna check that something overlaps. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes in here. We'll see. Okay. So uh, all right. And uh, it it just works. I ported this code and it just worked. Isn't that amazing? How it just worked? I think it's amazing. Uh-huh. So <laughs> It's pretty cool. So there you go. This worked. And it's identical to the Zig version. It's a little bit smoother because we actually have a variable uh, FPS, right? So that's why it feels a little bit smoother. So this version is a little bit better. I don't have a pose. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. How can I handle the characters and stuff like that. I remember people were suggesting to use the character. Um, just a second. Can I do case character A right? So this is A and D and it didn't work. And yeah, it still doesn't work. But if I try capitalizing this stuff, if I try to capitalize, it still doesn't work. So we'll have to learn how to work with that stuff. Uh, so we can take a look at the some of the examples in here, right? So we have to go to the module. Um, maybe let's go to the examples, right? And I want to just grab this thing and see how it is used. Key code, mouse button left, mouse button right. Get key code. Ooh. Input VK translation table. All right, so this is module. Uh, right, right uh, let's find it. So it must be somewhere in the modules. Okay. All right, I think I think that's that's it. I think that's what we need. So and there is like for different operating. So this only Mac OS though. Uh, why is it only Mac OS? That's weird. Uh, Oh yeah, because we are inside of Mac OS. Okay. I wonder if, do we have a other versions? Do we have other versions? That's a good question. Uh -huh, so no. Oh. Get key code. Yeah, okay, for, for this one, we take a key symbol and, okay, cool. So that's probably what I have to do. Uh, so main j so it accepts key sim so that means I have to is it even available but uh, we can give it a try okay so what if I try to do something like this uh, get key code a d and I'm gonna make them like this Ah, this is not what I want. What the hell? <laughs> uh huh. 
Okay. Character. Mm -hmm. Can be constant. Condition listed by case must be constant. Uh, you need through after char. Do I? Condition instead of case must be constant. I don't think so. What I think is that first of all, I have to make this stuff constant, right? At least. Uh -huh. And then maybe fall through. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I'm not sure if that's how I use that. Yeah, I'll need to take a look at the examples as well. Maybe even how to. Through, no. Grab. Throw. Uh, nope. Throw. Okay, it is a thing. And it has to be semicolon. Okay, I see. That's cool. Uh -huh. Okay, it works. That's beautiful. So. This stuff works. Uh, it's kind of surprising that I really have to run it. Do I really have to run it? Uh -huh. Condition case must be constant. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. I'm not sure if this is a good idea to do it like that. So I'm going to go to the examples one more time. And I'm gonna just like try to find how people use this kind of stuff, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do that. Uh huh. Well, huh. People don't use it in examples very often. Okay, maybe in modules then. Yeah. There's not that many examples on how you're supposed to use this thing. That's what makes it interesting, right? Uh, I guess it's fine, right? So you, I, I can always pre-compute this kind of stuff at compile time and put it into the constant and just use the constant in here. Uh, so that would be fine. Without the char? Do Are you just guessing again without backing up that with the knowledge, right? I can guess myself, all right. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, I guess that's basically it. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why I put in a question mark. Oh, okay. Uh, I see, I see. All right. Um, Wait, did it just something something sus has happened? Doesn't it handle on the side thingy? I feel like it failed to handle. Okay, uh, let me try to increase. I think I put somewhere a bug, a nasty nasty bug. Uh, what I need to do now is to set 100 to the thickness of the bar. Well, unfortunately, I want to only change the yeah, so bar thickness unfortunately is used everywhere in here. So maybe I have to do something like this: approach size, bar thickness. Oof. Oh, I was just fine in here, I suppose. All right. So no, it's fine. It actually handles that stuff from the sides fine. That's a pretty girthy bar. On from the right, it didn't work properly from the right. Yeah, so there was something. Huh. Oh, I think I know what was that. It usually happens when I'm moving with this thing in the same direction. <laughs> uh, right, but when it's in an opposite direction. Yeah. I see what's going on.
Mm -hmm. So I wonder if this, it's the same bug as in Zig. Right. As in Zig, we'll have to see. So I'm going to make the girth bar as well in here. And where can I do that? Bar thickness. So I'm going to put 100 in here. Right. And approach size. Okay. Here I'll try to build a zinc. Nice zinc. I'm not sure. Where was it? Third party zig. Bin zig. Build run. Okay. So it's going to work. Okay, so this is the Zig version. Yeah, it's the same bug as in Zig version because it's moving in the same direction. Okay, so but it's move, if it's moving in a different direction, it's going to work. So it's the same bug. It's in sight. Chat, it's in sight. I hid it. Okay. You can catch it, yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, that's an interesting book. Um, we'll have to do something about it. We'll see. But I really like the girthy bar. The girthy bar. Okay. So, no, this is not a zig out. It has to be a giant break. Let's do the giant break. Yeah, giant break is way smoother. Right, because it has a variable uh, thank you Good to feature. so for how long I'm streaming already I'm streaming for almost two hours what the fuck so I think I'm gonna make a small break and I'm gonna try to fix this thing <laughs> I really like this box should I even fix it I mean it's fine uh, it's pretty funny though you can just make the thing le less girthy right so you can make it like very thin and it's not going to be a bug anymore right so you can you can do something like this so it's, it's, you can see it's not a bug like at all uh, so but maybe it would be nice to to actually fix that all right so let's try to understand what the hell is going on right so let's take a look at the update so here we update the bar right we update the bar and we're checking for the horizontal collision, right? So horizontal collision happens primarily with the bar. So the bug is specifically with the bar, right? And when that usually happens, I think, I'm pretty sure why this kind of stuff happens. <laughs> It's when the bar and the projectile move in the same directions horizontally. In the same direction. Right. So it's when the... This is the bar, right? So because it's very girthy, we, we made it so. So that's the velocity of the, of the bar. We're moving there. And the projectile um, is something like this. And it's moving horizontally also in the same direction vertically it's a different direction vertically but horizontally it's the same direction so as you can see the component is just pointing in the same direction anyway so you can you can do something like this to indicate the component right so that's the uh, that's the thing so and here's the thing the speed of the bar the speed of the bar is bigger is higher longer stronger bigger than the horizontal speed of the projectile and this is so you can always catch up the uh, the projectile to you know reflect it so and that's why when this kind of situation occurs the bar can always catch up and hit this thing so what happens when the bar hits the projectile horizontally so this is the horizontal collision we always reflect dx Right, so that means 
as soon as they hit, the velocity will become this. You see? So that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem. And that only happens when they move in the same direction. That only happens when they move in the same direction. So what I'm thinking is... What I'm thinking is... So we're not doing like a proper physics or anything, so that's why we have a lot of hot code shit. Um, we need to... Mm -mm. Essentially, check. Are we overlapping in here? Right, if we collided with the bar and we overlaid it vertically, and they have the same direction of the of the velocity, right? We should not reflect that thing, right? So we should not reflect the x, but we should uh, reflect the y, right? So that's what should happen. So I wanna try. So it's super easy to write the code like that if this code was located in a separate, isolated procedure. Um, so let's call it horizontal collision. Horis uh, collision, right, so something like this. And I'm gonna move everything related to horizontal collision there. Uh-huh. So, there we go. Something like this. So this is a horizontal collision. We're gonna work with horizontal collision specifically. Right. Mm, horizontal collision. And to make things a little bit more clear, I might as well introduce vertical collision. So it's gonna be vert uh, collision. Something like this. So this is a vertical collision. Uh -huh. Vert collision. Uh, so I don't like that horiz is longer than vert. Let's call it horse. Horse and vert. Horse and vert. Uh, mm -mm. <clears throat> so let me let me see. So vert collision and uh, let me double check. Some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have a DT, so let's uh, uh, let's actually give it DT. Uh, float thirty two. Uh -huh. oh my God. Float thirty two. Mm -hmm. So it didn't break anything. Okay. Well, this works the same. Okay, cool. So I want to rewrite this stuff a little bit, just a little bit. Mm. So first of all, we have a new projection, right? If proj and x is less than that, or actually, yeah, we can do something like that. So we have this long collision, uh, not collision, but condition. And if this is true, right, if we collide it, we kind of want to do this thing, right? So we reflect it and we assign this thing to a different place. And afterwards, we straight up short circuit this entire stuff. We straight up short circuit. So that way, we don't care about this thing, like at all. Because then, as soon as something overlaps, right, as soon as something overlaps, we can do it again. Right. Uh, and furthermore, we can do it like that. 
So short circuiting. So the reason why this logic is what was so complicated is because I needed an easy way to short circuit this entire logic. Like I didn't have a way to do that because this thing was not in a separate procedure. Um, right. <clears throat> so this is the target. If it's uh, dead, continue. Mm. Let's dead continue. If it overlaps, it becomes dead. Uh, maybe I can even collapse these things together. Not dead and overlaps becomes dead. Then we do that and then we short circuit. Uh, because of that, because of that, we don't need this condition anymore. So the logic kind of became a little bit easier. You know what I? You know what I mean? Even though there is a little bit of a duplicate in here, right? A little bit of a duplicate. It's a little bit easier to read because now it is clear what the hell is going on, right? So this basically we um, reflect when we hit anything, right? We just reflect this entire thing. Uh, we can even probably put that into like a separate uh, separate macro and whatnot. Mm. As a comparably new programmer who only studied some six years ago, is there a real reason to use short names like instead of projectile or is it just a habit? <sighs> okay. So, uh, let me see, does that work? It seems to be working, more or less. Okay, so it even happens when some other stuff, okay. Uh, all right, so now, now, uh, I hope the music is not too loud. Sometimes it's just like too loud, sometimes it is not. Let me just readjust things around. Um, so why was it important? Why was it important? Because now I can do something like if we overlap horizontally, right, we can short circuit. But we can short circuit only if um, the stuff is... Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. They move in the same direction, so basically... Uh -huh. So this overlaps... And bar x is equal to proj x. Actually, bar dx, proj dx, right. So, and maybe we can even move this logic sort of into the same thing. Right, so that's all we have in here. So this is or. Uh -huh. Or, yeah, there we go. So, when one of these conditions are true, only then we reflect. So, if they overlap with this thing, we uh, only re uh, reflect when they're not in the same direction. Because if they are, you basically move in towards it. So, but that also gives an opportunity to. Uh, for the vertical collision to kick in, right? So, and if the vertical collision kicks in, it might actually solve that problem. Yeah, okay, it fixed. It's actually, it's actually, I think it's actually fixed. Well, I mean, no, it's not fixed. Uh, I need to catch the moment. Yeah, it doesn't fix anything. Because it is always faster yeah, so you cannot really fix that because it is always faster. There is like nothing you can do about that. Um, there is really nothing. Though, maybe there is something we can do. Uh, we can just snap the bar to the top. Mm -hmm. Just snap the bar to the top. Prod, thank you, thank you for the for the rate. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, because the bar is just like moves uh, faster, you can't really do anything. Okay, so 100. If I try to move it like this, 
Mm, yeah, yeah. So uh, people already suggested what I said. You, you can always push it to the sur uh, to the surface. Essentially, that's one of the things you can do. Um, I guess. I guess I'm gonna go that route. Just essentially push it to the to the surface. Uh, it only happens like horizontally because the bar moves horizontally, right? Because the bar moves horizontally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, okay. So. Uh, did, 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 um, so horizontal collision. Mm, I'm thinking and thinking if we've got that, if we are overlapping, if we are overlapping, we're doing this thing, right? We're doing this thing. But on top of that, if we are moving in the same direction, we need to take the bar uh, proj, proj y, right? Proj y and push it to the surface and the question is where is the surface so the surface well we already compute the surface when we compute the initial y all right it's um it's actually a very specific value we can we can pre-compute that value i think it's it could be a pre-computable value so proj x, actually proj y, uh, bar, eh. yeah, let's keep it like that, because I, I can't really come up with a good name for this thing, so I'm gonna keep uh, leaving as this. Uh, Alright, so let me see, let me see, so, it still doesn't fucking work, even though I said it, like snap it to the surface snap it to the surface let's actually do that all the time how about we do that all the time if we just do that okay then that is too aggressive i think uh let's make it girthier mm -mm -mm, 100 there we go mm -mm -mm -mm. all right that that's that sucks <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's not supposed to be like that anyway, so... Uh-huh. Well, it's not... it's not that bad. Right, so it, it only sucks this much because it's so girthy. Right, you know what I mean? Um... It's because it's so girthy. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I'll probably need to think about that. Uh, if I make it like half of the approach size, it's not a problem whatsoever. I think. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway. So I'm gonna keep, uh, leave it as it is, and then I'm gonna think how I want to improve that. So I'm streaming for two hours already anyway, so that's my limit, uh, right? Because streaming is a really intensive process. So I guess I'm going to go. Does anyone have any questions before I go? Mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, when will you come back to Porth? In the future. Um, will we fix it for the Zig version? No. Only for 300 bucks. <laughs> Alright, that's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. 
have a good one and i see you on the next stream love you Mm-hmm.